Your pump is one of the most important pieces of equipment in your pool, but how does a pump actually work? And what do you need to do when your pump's not working? Well, here's everything you need to know about pool pumps and how to troubleshoot them. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Matt from Swim University, and before we get into this video, if you want more help taking care of your pool, be sure to grab our free pool care cheat sheet at swimu.com slash cheat sheet. It's totally free and will help keep your pool clean and clear throughout the year. First, how does a pool pump work? Your pump is the heart of your pool, pumping water through your plumbing and your filter system. So when your pump is running, your water is actively getting filtered and it's helping to circulate and disperse any chemicals in your water. And here's how the water flows. Your pump sucks in water from the pool through the skimmers or the main drains and into the suction lines. This is called the suction side of your pool. And as the water passes through your pump, the forces changes from pulling to pushing and the pump pushes the water into your filter. You might also have a heater, a chlorinator, or a salt system after the filter. And after it passes through the filter, the water is pushed through the return lines through the pressure side. Then it flows out of your return jets and then back into your pool. Now, if you look at the plumbing lines that lead to your pump, you might see one or more valves. These control the water flowing into your pump. You might use these valves to temporarily stop the flow of water if you need to work on your pump or your filter system. It might be just a simple shutoff valve or a three-way valve that controls the flow of water from the skimmers or the main drain. Okay, so here's the anatomy of a pool pump and knowing each piece is really helpful for troubleshooting pool problems. Number one is the pump lid. The lid needs to completely seal tight to keep air out of the pump and the suction in your lines. Number two is the pump strainer housing with the pump basket. This is where the pool water first enters the pump. The basket collects debris so it doesn't clog up your pump's spinning impeller. And then number three is the drain plug. This is used to drain the pump during winterization. You may have more than one drain plug on your pump. And number four is the pump housing with the impeller. This is the main control center where the impeller, diffuser, and seals live. The impeller spins on a motor shaft, creating the vacuum that pulls the water from your pool and then pushes it towards your filter. If it gets clogged or jammed, the whole pump can stop working. Number five is the pump motor and the shaft. This is where the motor lives and it's what spins the impeller. Okay, next let's talk about pump size. Your pump needs to be powerful enough to pull in and filter all the water in your pool at least once a day. This is what's called a turnover rate. It usually means running your pump for at least eight hours a day to filter all the water in your pool. If you want an exact number, here's how to calculate your turnover rate. First, you wanna start with your pool's volume in gallons, and then you're gonna divide that by your pump's horsepower or flow rate, which is usually in gallons per minute or GPM. That will give you your turnover rate in minutes. Now, for example, if your pool is 15,000 gallons and you have a pump with a flow rate of 40 GPM or gallons per minute, you'll have a turnover rate of 375 minutes. That means it takes a little over six hours to filter all the water in your pool. Finally, let's talk about pump maintenance and troubleshooting. Here's what to check on to make sure that your pump is always working properly. This is especially important if your pump has been turned off for a while. So number one is you wanna check your pump basket. Any debris not caught in your skimmer basket can make its way to your pump basket. So check and empty your pump basket and only remove the pump basket when the pump is off. Number two is you wanna check your pump lid seal. If your pump isn't sealed properly, air can get into your system. You wanna check the lid's O-ring for cracks and damages and use a lubricant specifically made for O-rings or replace the O-ring if it's completely worn out. Number three is you wanna check your pump connections. Any weak connections can introduce air into the system. So inspect the unions and the connection points between the pump and the plumbing lines. You may also wanna consider adding plumber's tape to any looser connection points to prevent air leaks. Number four is you wanna keep your water level at least halfway up the skimmer. If it dips too low, your pump can start sucking in air. And worse, your pump can run dry and overheat. Number five is you wanna clean your skimmer basket and your filter regularly. If your water isn't flowing through the skimmer 
or the filter properly, your pump will struggle. So empty your skimmer basket once a week and backwash or clean your filter when the pressure starts to creep up. Number six is you wanna check your skimmer line. Sometimes a pair of goggles or a hair scrunchie can get caught in the skimmer line, blocking the flow of water to your pump. If you think your skimmer line is clogged, check out our other video on unclogging your skimmer. So what happens if you've gone through this checklist, but your pump isn't working? If the water flow is low to your pump, but the pump itself is running, you probably just need to prime your pump. This can happen when air gets sucked into the skimmer after you've shut off the pump. You wanna prime the pump by filling it with a garden hose for at least two to three minutes while the pump is turned off. Then quickly reseal the pump lid and turn your system back on. You can also use an air relief valve on your filter to help remove any air in the lines as your pump is starting. If you need more help priming your pump, be sure to check out our other video. If you think there's an air leak, but you're not sure where it's coming from, use the shaving cream trick. Yes, spreading a little shaving cream on possible problem areas. If there's an air leak, say one of the unions or the pump lid, air will suck in the shaving cream, leaving an indent. Finally, if your pump isn't running and it's making a humming sound, it means there's something wrong with the motor. So you wanna try resetting the breaker and check your pump's impeller to see if it's jammed. Check out our other video all about fixing your pump if it's making weird noises. And if you need more help with pool care, grab our free pool care cheat sheet at swimu.com slash cheat sheet. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe and check out our channel for more tutorials like this one. That's it, thanks again and happy swimming.